Welcome to Fox Hills Black Report, your daily source for black news, black views, and black opinions. Happy Hump Day. Today is Wednesday, May 18th, and I'm Mimi Brown. And I'm Romeo. I'm Demi Lobo. And on today's report, a possible motive as to why a gunman opened fire in a black neighborhood in Buffalo, New York. His family weighs in days after the tragedy. Meanwhile, should rap lyrics be used against rappers in court? One state is now taking a strong stance against the controversial practice. What it could mean for other states in the U.S. Then, after raising more than $90 million in 2020, Black Lives Matter has $42 million in assets. The organization is offering offering the first official accounting of financing, and we have the details. Plus, could Chris Rock return to host the Oscars? And who holds the record for the worst host in Billboard Music Awards history? That picture might tell you, I don't know. But we do have all of that and so much more. It is our voice and our truth, so let's get it. details unfold about the Buffalo shooter, a new defense angle is rolling out from his relatives. COVID-19 family members say the gunman likely snapped because of paranoia and isolation that resulted from the pandemic. They also say they had no idea that he was a white supremacist and never saw any warning signs that he would snap. But police say 30 minutes before he launched his attack, the gunman invited a small group of people to join him on an online chat room. And that's where he shared his hand-drawn map of the grocery store and his plans to attack people in the store. Police and the federal government say the shooting was a hate crime targeting the black community. The suspect is due in court tomorrow. Uh, you know, listen, I understand that your family wants to kind of make a defense for you, but at the end of the day, like I said, the day this happened on Monday, this was pure evil. Mm -hmm. This was pure hate. He methodically planned this out over months. We know he visited the store several times. Um, he had uh, drawings of the, the store, the aisles. And I, you know, I was curious if we know that he shared the details online with people in the chat room, are they now going to be charged? Mm -hmm. Because they did not do anything or say anything. Absolutely. Um, when this happened, and I'm going to say something that's really controversial here, okay. but it needs to be said. So do you remember the school shooter in Michigan? And he went, his name was uh, Ethan Crumbly, I believe, and he went and he shot up his school and they charged the parents mm -hmm. um, with, uh, they, I believe they charged them with involuntary manslaughter and failing to intervene. So at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, okay, so the family can come up with all kinds of, of excuses for right. him, but I, the fact still remains is that when he was in high school, he wrote some essay mm -hmm. about wanting to commit mass murder mm -hmm. under their roof. You know, I, I think about my own upbringing and how I would never be allowed to leave the house in full tactical gear, let alone did he have a job? Did he drive yeah. his parents' car to, to commit this? Like, just questions, so many questions. And I just think that as uh, someone who was still in high school or someone who just graduated high school, there's, some, there's, a, there's a lot of blame to go around of people turning the other cheek or not paying yes. attention to what was happening. Great. Mimi, absolutely. I don't believe that the parents uh, or the parents or there's going to be any accountability on anyone else. Literally, we saw yesterday this young boy walk to someone's house with a whip and the parents were totally fine with it. So I don't think that anyone is going to want to or take accountability for his actions. Also, are we not all a little depressed and stressed out from the pandemic? Yeah. Do we yeah, not absolutely. all lose family yeah. members, lose friends and family? Do we all not lose jobs on furlough? So we all went through something during the pandemic. So this is a crock of crap. The family members mm -hmm. saying that he was a little stressed out because of the pandemic when there are black families who lost at his hands now more families that are losing lives and losing their jobs, right? Losing family members. So that's a crock of crap that he was stressed out and he killed black people because of the pandemic. Also, Mimi, like you said, uh, putting this the maps and things like that in the, the chat rooms, there should have been someone that says, hey, man, this is not a good right. idea. Yeah. But the, the, there's a disregard for black life, yeah. so nobody said anything. No one said anything. Whether well, they want to sit and say, we didn't think he was actually going to do it or not. Maybe we should dig deeper into his household. You know, mm -hmm. his parents That's are trying to saying. defend him in some way. Maybe they may be a part of it, too, oh, as yeah. we look deeper. More mm -hmm. is going to come from this story. And I will say this. I mean, there are stories out there saying, but when you went on Twitch, I guess how you can see him when he mm -hmm. was in the chat room, he literally sat at the back of the parking lot of the grocery store and said, I guess I got to go for it. 
right? Yeah. And then he went for it and he took away 10 lives mm. and he hurt families for the rest of their lives. Yes. Look, we're going to look deep into this and won't be surprised if we find out something going on with the family. Yeah. I'm just and it and, and this goes back to my theory yesterday that he was not alone. He, there was someone else helping him and also to his family. Why would they acknowledge that he's a white supremacist? Because then the family too would have to acknowledge that they're white supremacists as well. Mm. Exactly. There's a lot of blame to go around here. I mean, I, really quickly, he, he, uh, he bought a legal gun, but mm. he used a drill to take it apart to make it illegal. Where was everybody in the house? Like, I just don't understand, mm. like, how you were able to do this in your home without anyone yes. asking any questions whatsoever. Yes. Malachi, 18 sense. years old in my house, I'm still going to be monitoring Listen, what he's doing because absolutely. you're in my house. Listen, mm -hmm. yeah. growing up, you could not have your door closed long enough yes. without my mother just walking in. Like, what are you doing? Agreed. It just it's, yeah. it doesn't make well, any sense. Well, we need more black moms like ours. Okay. <laughs> All right, a Buffalo man is in jail for allegedly calling local businesses and referencing Saturday's massacre. Police say 52-year-old Joseph Chuaniak made threatening phone calls to a pizzeria and brewery the day after the massacre. Now, they say he threatened to copy the grocery store mass shooting. He is expected to be in a Buffalo court for a felony hearing on Friday. Now, if convicted, he could face seven years in prison. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is calling out Rupert Murdoch and Fox News executives. He is urging the chairman of Fox News to stop promoting the so-called Great Replacement theory, uh, or theory on his network. In a letter to Murdoch, Schumer cited a recent New York Times investigation that shows Fox talk show host Tucker Carlson has promoted the belief for years. Investigators say the Buffalo Massacre shooter mentioned the theory in his letter. The idea is rooted a conspiracy theory that says Democrats and elites are trying to replace white people in America with immigrants from Africa. Africa, the Mideast, Asia, and South America. Meanwhile, Tucker Carlson is now trying to distance himself from the shooter, saying the gunman's manifesto was not a political one. According to a New York Times investigation, no other public figure has championed the theory of white people that they'll be replacing black people and other minorities more than Carlson. The paper found that from 2018 to 2021, Carlson mentioned the great replacement theory more than 400 times. Now, many are calling for Carlson. They're calling him a national disgrace and demanding that he be removed for inciting violence. Violence. And a new study says that there are more police involved shootings in states where people are allowed to carry concealed weapons without permits. The John Hopkins University report says that police involved shootings increased almost 13 percent between 2014 and 2020. Where those permits were concealed weapons, they are not needed. Now, Missouri had the highest number in the show me state and it got rid of its permit to carry requirement back in 2016. Researchers say that police in those states may they receive, may perceive and receive a greater sense of danger. A black activist calling for changes in Louisville's police department after the death of Breonna Taylor lost her bid to become mayor. Businessman Craig Greenberg beat out seven other candidates in last night's Democratic primary. Activist Shamika Parrish Wright came in a distant second. Parrish Wright, a community activist, took part in protests after Breonna Taylor's death. Political analysts predicted Louisville's race for mayor will be influenced by citizens wanting a change to the police department after cops killed Taylor in 2020. Greenberg will now face Republican Bill Dyroff in November's general election. Several African-American students in Georgia who were suspended because they wore Black Lives Matter t-shirts are filing a lawsuit after their, on their school district. The students say while BLM shirts were banned, white students were allowed to wear clothing with a Confederate flag. In the lawsuit, students say bigotry at the Floyd County School was blatant by white teachers and staff. The students also allege white kids were not disciplined after posting videos on social media reenacting George Floyd's death. The suit says the school district and its board allowed a pattern of overt racism against the black students. Georgia's elections board is dismissing three allegations of ballot fraud brought by a conservative activist. The board says that David Cross falsely accused residents in the Atlanta area of illegally turning in other people's ballots back in the 2020 election. The cases gained attention in conservative media after the release of a movie promoted by right wing activists. Now, this film, it alleges that people took part in a criminal conspiracy to collect and return tens of thousands of ballots in 2020. It promotes the big lie that Donald Trump Trump has been pushing since he lost to Joe Biden. 
South Carolina's Republican governor has quietly signed a new transgender sports ban into law. South Carolina now becomes the 16th state in the country to ban transgender students from playing girls or women's sports in public schools or colleges. Governor Henry McMaster signed the bill into law Monday without a ceremony like some other Republican governors have done. The law requires transgender students to compete with the gender listed on the birth certificates. A New York State Senate approving the rap music is on trial bill. It's the first kind in the nation. The bill will prevent song lyrics from being used as evidence in criminal cases. It provides protection for all artists and content creators in New York. Artists such as Jay-Z and Fat Joe recently signed their names on the letter supporting the legislation. The passage of the bill comes a week after prosecutors in Atlanta unveiled a sweeping new case against Young Thug and Gunna that relied heavily on their music. Now, critics say the use of rap lyrics in criminal cases is controversial because it treats rap as it's a literal statement rather than a creative expression, which also violates the First Amendment. It also taps into biases toward young black men, helping prosecutors win convictions where real evidence is lacking. Uh, I, I'm so happy for this. I think we spoke about this a little bit yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, hip hop is held to a very different standard, I believe. And when you... Um, you kind of, you know, and I looked, I, I'm not saying that, that it's not out there, but I looked for other genres of music where lyrics were, were used against uh, other artists and I couldn't find any. But I did find in 2001, a no limit uh, uh, artist was convicted of manslaughter in 2001 because his rap lyrics were used against him. Now, I say that to say you still have to be careful what you say. It's not yeah, a jit, get out of jail free card. It's a be smart card. You should not lay out what you did or if you're going to commit a crime or whatever in your rap lyrics that just doesn't make sense but you know it also you should also have freedom to express yourself and it shouldn't be used against you depending on depending on what you write and, and what you're saying okay well sometimes it falls within your lifestyle because you know you have a lot of rappers saying they got a lot of money they got the bling back in the day all that and most of the time it's not true they'll leave the video set and leave all that behind mm -hmm. and go back to their regular life so it's kind of a give and take when it comes to that situation but I do feel like this like if you're going to talk about it and you really are about it, then you got to suffer the consequences that come along with it. Absolutely. Because Mimi, I think that your statements kind of contradict each other because you're like, I'm happy for on one hand, but then also you have to be conscious of what you say because that's the whole thing here. You can't just say whatever you want to say. Romeo, you're absolutely right. But also too, you can't say like, this is lifestyle. We're talking about killing people. We're not talking about bling. That you can't be prosecuted because you talked about I wore too much bling. We're talking about people being prosecuted because you say you shot someone and you killed somebody. So that is not something that is like, oh, well, I think that's unfair fair that his rap music saying that he shot that he shot and killed the person shouldn't be used against him that's that's not the, you, you know I mean we can't say that we're happy for it to protect artists lyrics but at the same time you have to be conscious of what you say those are contradicting each I, other. I do I, I I believe in both I definitely think that you need to watch what you're saying but I definitely believe like for an example we know that that rap artists they say a lot of things that may or may not be true a lot yeah. of them are be like you know i'm slinging dope i'm doing this i uh, killed so and so people maybe, have said that and it's, and not, maybe not, it's true. not true you guys maybe it's not that true creative expression saying that if you really did it, you can well, go, if, well, you do, if you do something illegal, that's considered creative. But and if it's if if they do something illegal, that's very different. But what I'm saying is, if they're rappers and they're trying to get on or whatever the situation right. is, and they they're they're saying these things for street cred or whatever it may be, we're all buying it. It's selling records. It can it be used against you later on in life? It could. It could. It could. could. I don't know about it that could but should it? I don't know. I mean, all I'm saying is there are other artists and other genres that are allowed to have creative expression, and no one is putting their lyrics under a microphone. But they're not saying the same you thing. Know, rap, you, rock, do we know art, that rock, in hard rock? Rock, rock, rock artists are not saying Mama, I killed the man, Queen. Did they go knock on the door when they heard those Listen. lyrics? Yeah, but did that, did that already also Do happen? we know that? Because in the, because do we know because that? Because in Yuck Thug situation, it actually happened here. So we don't, we don't know if it's true If you true talk or not. about it and you really are about yeah. it, yeah, which careful. most people aren't. Exactly. But if you are, consequences. You got to stand on it. Yeah. Absolutely. A law requiring women on corporate boards is unconstitutional. That's what a Los Angeles judge has ruled. Superior Court Judge Maureen Duffy Lewis says that the law requiring three female directors to be on a board violates the right to equal treatment. Now, the conservative group Judicial Watch challenged that law, and they say it is illegal to use taxpayer funds to enforce a law that violates the Equal Protection Clause of the California Constitution by mandating a gender-based quota. The foundation started by Black Lives Matter organizers has tens of millions of dollars after spending more than $37 million on grants, real estate, consultants, and other expenses. A 63-page tax form shared with the Associated Press says that Black Lives Matter 
Global Network Foundation reports that it invested $32 million in stocks from the $90 million it got from donations. BLM organizers say the investment is expected to become an endowment to ensure the foundation's work continues in the future. The filing also reveals Damon Turner, the father of Patrice Colors, only child received nearly a million dollars through his art firm, Trap Hills LLC. Turner's company was hired to produce live events and provide other creative services. A security firm run by Colors brother received $840,000 according to the filings. The AP says the filing shows BLM has no executive director or in-house staff. Nonprofit experts told the AP that the BLM Foundation seems to be operating like a small operation with far less money. And three teens who escaped a Louisiana juvenile detention center over the weekend are back in custody. Police say they tracked down the getaway car that was carrying the teens to a Texas motel. 21-year-old Victoria Toon, a security guard at the Ware Detention Facility, is accused of helping the kids escape. Police say they arrested the group after they returned to the motel hours after investigators found the car. They said a relative of the kids dropped them off at the motel. All suspects will be extradited back to Louisiana, where they will face additional charges. A black Missouri high school student is suing the Kearney School District for racial discrimination. The student, who has not been named, alleges he and his sister experienced racial bias when he attended the city's high school, and it was from the years 2018 to 2019. Now, the suit says that the boy's younger sister also suffered from racial discrimination while she was at the city's middle school. According to the lawsuit, when the boy joined the swim team, white swimmers told him he needed to shave his hair short and dye it blonde. In another instance, a white student took a picture of the boy and superimposed a racial slur over the top of it. It was reported to the teachers, of course, who told them that they would deal with it at a future day because students had a football game that they needed to get to. The situation only got worse when white students started tormenting him with monkey sounds. And the suit says that all the incidents were reported to the school administrators, but nothing administrators as well. They were reported to both, but they found out that nothing was done to discipline those white students. Days after the massacre in Buffalo, a black family in a nearby town woke up to discover the N-word spray painted on his fence. The graffiti said, kill all and the blank. Johnny Parks, who lives in the home, called police to report the incident. Managers at the local Home Depot heard about what happened on the news. They sent the crew out to replace the panels on the fence. The store also paid for a security camera and installed it for Parks. Parks, who has won local awards for his community work, says his home is next to a park where kids often hang out. And the city of Minneapolis is settling a lawsuit by a black man who was beaten by cops during the George Floyd protests. Jaleel Stallings will receive $1.5 million plus legal fees. The beating happened after officers uh, opened lethal, non-lethal rounds at him while he was standing in a parking lot. Stallings, who was licensed to carry a weapon, fired back at the cops who were in unmarked vehicles. Stallings said he didn't recognize or realize that he was shooting at police. He was arrested and charged with attempted murder. That case was dropped. The body cam video picked up audio earlier that night, though, of officers saying they were going hunting for pro for protesters. Stallings suffered a broken eye socket and other injuries from the beating. None of the officers have been disciplined. Uh, I think the key word here is legally licensed to carry a firearm. If someone starts firing at you and they are in unmarked cars, yeah. uh, plain clothes, you have no idea and you mm -hmm. are legally, legally is the, again the key word, uh, licensed to carry and you shoot back at them, you should not be charged with attempted murder. And even after he surrendered, he said he stopped shooting once he realized it was police, he said that they still beat him up. Yeah. Right after that. I know it was so disturbing. When you, if you watch the whole video, so Mason, you can hear how they're laughing, they're joking while they're out there. Oh, I felt like I was watching GTA or Call yeah. of Duty or something. Mm -hmm. Like they were, like they were out having a good time. People are rioting because of what happened in your city. People died in that city. They're fighting for their rights, and you want to go out there and you're supposed to protect the city. And this is how you approach it. This is how you approach it. And then once finding out and getting this man to the ground, you still continue to beat him. 1.5 million is not enough. You mm -hmm. can't put a price on it. But how can we just keep cutting a check mm -hmm. to make an excuse for beating up a black man or woman? Yeah. Romeo, I'm really happy that you say GTA because I was trying to uh, mention GTA yesterday and I don't play video games. So I couldn't get the, <laughs> I couldn't figure out what it was. But that's exactly what this world that we're living in right now is like GTA. And you wonder where do police officers and people even get this type of stuff from? And I believe that video games is is, is the root of some of it because mm. some of it is just really strange the way that they just uh, the way they're approaching exactly. the situation. Exactly. Yeah, it, it seems like a video game. It doesn't even seem like we're we're living in this. this I mean, this real you time could right tie now. the video games back to the Buffalo shooter. Mm. I mean, with exactly. the with the. Mm. Uh, 
the helmet yeah, and the live stream and, and yes. all of that. I yeah. mean, you definitely there's some there's some definitely uh, correlations there. We will keep you posted on that.